we continue our journey to testing process by looking at test organization and responsibility of testing. The source for this taxonomy of test organization comes from Edward Kitt's book that is available in the library as a hard, hard copy, not that, uh, as an electronic book. Uh, it's quite old book from 1995, but the way to approach test organization has not really changed over the years. So these are still valid considerations uh, and valid models for organizing testing. So the first solution is that testing is each person's responsibility. It's the sort of natural approach. Uh, it's the sort of approach that you have probably uh, tried in programming courses where you have tested your own software. So we have a bunch of product developers uh, and each of them wears two hats, the tester hat and the product developer hat, and they test their own, sof own software. It's it's natural solution, it's easy, there is no sort of workflows involved, there, there is no need for any co coordination or any management. However, the downside is that you test your own software. And why this is a problem is that testing should be independent. I mean, no one is very eager to find defects or faults in the software they have created. So they don't want to find the defects in the software that might be there. And this also means that they are not likely to do a very good job in searching for those defects. A simple solution for this can be that each unit or each team is responsible for testing and organizing this in a way that, that would be peer testing. So we still only have product developers, but each developer does not test their own code. They test someone else's code. So they are still product developers and testers at the same time, but they develop their own code and then they test someone else's code. In this way, the tester is more independent from the source code, and as the tester is not testing one's own code, uh, she or he is more likely to be interested in finding those defects and doing a better job in testing, because they are more independent. However, this still leaves an issue that you have to do two tasks, and you should be competent in both tasks. So you should be good, both good software developer and also good software tester. So this double competency is not ideal in all cases. So the third approach is to have a dedicated resource. So we still have a bunch of product developers under some manager, uh, but we have three product developers and one tester. In, in, the, in this organization. This solves the multiple task problem. So now product developers develop the product and testers are responsible for testing it. And it's still possible to keep within single team. So the communication and distribution of knowledge should be quite easy. Some issues with this approach are that, you know, you have to manage two types of people. So as a manager, you have to be uh, managing the, the programmers, the software developers, but then also the testers. And, and this might be a problem in, in competency development, for example, on how you ensure that the testers' competencies also are, are up to par and, and so on. And of course, there might be problems in how do you select a tester. So if you previously had four programmers and then you select one of them to be the tester. So if you select always the worst programmer to be the tester, that night, that night might not be an ideal solution because the one might be lacking the technical skills needed for software testing. Okay, another approach is to have a dedicated resource but in large scale. So we have product development teams that have their own manager and then we have test developers. So it solves the management problem of, of 3A, but then this has to be placed somewhere inside the organization. So here we have product development organization 
and then we have quality assurance organization that host the test development group. Uh, there might be some issues in placing the test development group inside quality assurance organizations. Uh, and this is particularly true if you are doing traditional products where the quality assurance organization might not be very familiar what software testing is all about. So they might approach the quality from the manufacturing viewpoint. Uh, they might be more inclined to statistical process control. And means that come from industrial engineering, not means that come from software engineering. Another big issue with this approach is that the product development group is not responsible for the final product or its quality. So they just develop something and then they throw it over the wall to the separate organization whose job is then to sort of attach quality on top of this product. And this can be actually a receipt for disaster. Uh, this can be a receipt for uh, long development times where the testing takes forever because, you know, because of this organizational difficulty. Another approach according to Git is to have put the testing inside the product development organization. So you have product development group and then you have test development group. And this product development organization as a whole is now responsible for the quality. Uh, still, this is somewhat dependent on, on the management communication and there still could be this throwing it over the wall syndrome. Uh, and there might be still issues with, with the teamwork between these two groups. So, uh, as we move from test organization in product development, there is a decision to elevate the test development group to be a centralized test organization. So no, no longer is it inside product development. Uh, this is moving testing to a higher level. And notice that in this is different from four, where test organization is in quality assurance organization. So now testing, test development group really becomes like a top level organization that is directly uh, not below a manager, but the vice president. So it sort of elevates uh, the importance of testing. Um, however, this, you know, how, how will the, you know, similar kind of problems that are here in five would happen in six. So teamwork at low level, what would be the consistency of methods uh, and, and so on. Of course, the, this would be, you know, better for the career path for test management as, as you would, you could rise higher up into the organization. So in the seventh approach, according to the Git, uh, to the Git book, you have still product development group and test development group under the vice president, but then you have a separate test technology group uh, that supports the test development group. So the purpose of this group is to uh, ensure that the technologies used in the company are correct and support with the, with the tools, whereas these groups perform the actual testing and utilizes the technology provided by this test technology center. So this approach does not come from Kit, but I add it here as, a, as it's very relevant in practice. So one might want to outsource the testing from consultancy and hire an independent test organization to conduct the test. This might be because you simply don't have enough skilled testers in your workforce or you need software testing, for example, uh, one or two months a year. So it would be during those two months a year that you do a lot of testing. And throughout the 10 other months, you are mainly in the product development phase and you do less testing. So having outside consultants could help you fill in the need for have more testers in a certain period. Having an independent test organization to do the testing that comes from outside organization offers maximal independence. And sometimes this is actually used in, in public or, or in projects where the organization that is 
ordering the software is not very high on ex software development expertise. So they might order the project from a certain organization. So we order this software from this company. But then they might hire uh, or they might order the software testing for that uh, software they have ordered from some other organization to have independence on the testing. So this way the, the organization that is ordering the software could use the sort of independent testing organization to ensure that the product development organization is not trying to publish something that's unworkable and in this way it could sort of help uh, the organization that is ordering this software uh, with their limited competencies to have this outside of tester uh, outside testing organization to ensure that nothing too bad is going to come from the, from the software development organization. Finally, there is also high expertise required in, in certain fields of software testing, or at least when you go very deep into the testing of security and performance and perhaps usability. But, but I would say that perhaps security testing is somewhere where most companies use outside help as they cannot have secu enough security expertise inside. So when you are going for really, really deep expertise, it might be a good idea to hire those resources from the outside for the particular period that you need those resources. Of course, if you need security experts to be around all the time, then it's better to hire them in, in the company. So here is some criteria on looking at how one could decide on the organization of testing. This is just different viewpoints. So one could look into have you know organization that offers maximal support for decision making. Uh, how the well does organization support teamwork? Is how is test independency of testing supported? So as you should not be testing your own software, or at least there should be some independency involved. Um, how can you balance testing and software development? Uh, how does it assist test management? Ownership of test technology. How is the resource utilization? If your software is running on hardware that is very expensive, uh, to utilize and you only have few of those resources, how you maximally utilize those resources. Uh, what's the career path for different people inside different organizational structures? Obviously there is no one-size-fits-all solutions here, but it's an often a mixture of, of different approaches overall. So it's testing approach might have a different solution that would be ideal for them. Maybe it would be ideal to have software security testing part of the test technology center model if it requires uh, complex tools uh, and then have dedicated resources perform that software testing uh, regarding the software security. So it could be like seven plus three for software security. Then for for functional testing uh, done at the unit level, it could be each person's responsibility. Uh, one could consider that usability testing might be each unit's responsibility. So there might be a dedicated resource or you might do peer testing. Maybe a dedicated resource in this case would be better for the usability testing. But there would be no support for the, for the outside organization. So there is no one size fits all solution here, but you know, these are different approaches with different benefits and different uh, drawbacks on how to organize testing. So we can now add the responsibility uh, or the organization as a part of the test process dimension. So we have a field of responsibility here which could be whose responsibility is to do the testing. Is it person? Is it units? Which you know, means peer testing. Dedicated, in, dedicated resources in teams, dedicated resources in large, and so on. 
And as pointed out, this might be different for different types of testing. So it might be person level responsibility for white box unit testing regarding functionality. And it might be dedicated resource in teams when it comes to usability and black box testing that is conducted on a, on a monthly basis, perhaps. So this would be, you know, individualized paths of how is a particular testing conducted. 